In this Codex review, we're going to be covering the units of the Chaos Space Marines. Chaos is one of the more popular competitive armies right now, as they have good options for souping with the other Chaos factions. But in order to keep all the Codex reviews interesting, I'm not going to be including units that appear in other Codexes, so that means no Demon Princes or Plague Marines and stuff like that. That means we're only going to be including models from Night Lords, Alpha Legion Word Bearers, Black Legion World Eaters, Emperor's Children, Renegade Chapters, and The Fallen. Before we begin, I'd like to go over the star rating. One star units typically underperform even in the specialised role that they are given. A two star unit has some synergy with an army, but not enough in order to make it into a more common list. Three stars is for units that are generally good in casual play. Four stars are exceptional units that make it into competitive, usually as a tech choice. And five stars are for mainstays of lists and competitive units. Either they're involved in some sort of strong strategy, or the army can't function without using these units. And let's get started! Starting at 1 star we have Huron Blackheart. He's part of the Red Corsairs which are a really good faction, especially if you bring Chaos Space Marines instead of Cultists to generate your command points. Command points are really important for the Chaos Space Marines as they are quite a stratagem intensive army, as are most armies to be fair in 40k, but Chaos especially seeing as their faction traits are quite weak. Huron on the other hand is not so good. He's an expensive HQ option that is the middle ground between a Sorcerer and a Chaos Lord. He only knows two powers, one of which is Smite, so even if his minion is alive, Hammer, Dryer, he's not as effective as a Sorcerer and he can't deep strike like a Chaos Lord can. His Tyrant Claw is an okay melee weapon, but Thunder Hammers are more consistent. He's also stuck in the very competitive HQ slot for Chaos. I can see reasons for wanting to take him, but honestly, just stick with Chaos Lords and Sorcerers if you want to take Huron Blackheart. It's more expensive, but individually they add so much more. Next up in 1 stars we have Lucius the Eternal. He has okay weapons and a decent amount of AP, and he does get rerolls of 1s and an almost captain stat line. His bonuses come in when he's fighting. First of all, he can add 2 to his attacks when he's fighting characters. He can also do mortal wounds to anything that hits him in the fight phase. Of course this does rely on him taking damage in the fight phase, which is less than optimal to say the least. He also only gets a 5 up invuln, unlike pretty much every other character in the Chaos HQ slot which gets 4 up invuln saves. The only thing left to complain about in Lucius the Eternal is him not being particularly eternal. There's no rules about him coming back after dying like there is in the law. I guess it would be pretty hard to balance, but there should be some flavour in there. Instead we'd end up with a disappointing Empress Children only exalted champion. Next up in 1 stars we have Mutilators. They're slow, random, and not particularly tough. Their high save is nice, but the access to low strength weapons with AP that a lot of armies have access to makes them kind of invalid. Unlike quite a few other melee units, they do have access to Deep Strike, which allows them to get into melee without the aid of a transport, but my reasoning for putting them so low is their no number of attacks. At 105 points for a squad you're getting just 9 attacks, so with that few attacks you probably want to target them with high toughness things, but due to their random strength, AP, and damage they might not even be able to scrape a rhino to pieces, let alone a knight. I can easily see myself undervaluing these units but I'm just not very impressed with their stats, and less so their abilities. Also the model is super ugly and dumpy as fuck, so it's a good reason not to bring them. Next up, we have the Chaos Land Raider. It's got transport, a 2-up save, can move without suffering the penalty for firing heavy weapons, and it's toughness 8. What can go wrong? Firstly, no invuln save means that any mean looking guns will tear right through its meager 16 wounds. Its guns are decent, having a mix of anti-tank las cannons and anti-infantry heavy bolters, but I think you're better off putting these weapons on Havocs, which are a much cheaper chassis, albeit a lot squishier. Its big profile means that it's kind of hard to hide, keep safe, and if you pop smoke to keep it alive a little longer, it can't shoot any of its expensive weapons, which makes it kind of a waste. And lastly, if you want to transport, just bring a Rhino to be honest. Rhinos are significantly cheaper, and while they can't clap back as hard as a Chaos Land Raider can, they're still very effective at getting things up the board. Next up in 1 star we have the Forge Fiend. There's nothing too impressive about the Forge Fiend. It has okay guns, but with a degradable 4 ballistic skill it's not terribly scary, especially seeing as it carries only heavy weapons, which it has no easy way of removing the penalty for. The only notable way that I can think of is to use the Iron Warrior's Warlord trait that allows you to move without suffering the penalties to fire heavy weapons. Its range is a little too short to make the fact that it can't move and shoot without a penalty all the more apparent. At least it has a 5 up in save to soak up some of the shots though. Although its low wound count means that it will inevitably be destroyed even through the 5 up in save. Next up we have the Mauler Fiend. They're much like the Forge Fiend, uh, except they are melee focused instead of gun focused. I guess six extra attacks is one of the uh, war gear options, which is nice, but considering how much they cost, and the fact that they don't really bring much damage to the table being only at strength 6, they just end up getting outclassed by almost every other melee option. So the Mauler Fiend ends up just being a bit useless. The model looks very nice though. Next up in one star we have, just like every piece of terrain, the Noctilith Crown. I like this one a lot more than the Mechboy's Workshop, 
and the pieces of terrain that Sisters of Battle get, but it can get destroyed, which is quite a large problem. Admittedly, a toughness 8 model at 80 points is not that bad, and the fact that it can actually shoot unlike every other piece of terrain is quite cool, but its range is absolutely tiny. And unlike every other piece of terrain, you can't actually place this piece of terrain wherever you like, it has to be inside your deployment zone. And as Chaos is quite an aggressive army, they want to be moving up the board to get into melee or within range of their shorter range weapons. The aura ranges are pretty small, the only particularly large one isn't all too impactful because it relies around enemy psychers being in range of it, which most of the time they can just avoid. Furthermore, it can end up just being a good charge target for your opponent if they deep strike something next to it. It means you can't even fire overwatch at it, and they're just getting a safe charge in. I will admit at least that the aura effects are quite nice, especially if you're not too interested in bringing too many demon things and are more interested in taking more chaos things. Providing a 5 weapon bomb save is not something to scoff at, although I do wish the aura range was larger. I will also note that the aura range does grow in size as turns go on, but it's better, especially in a more aggressive army, to have a larger aura range at the start and have it decrease over time, rather than try and play the long game when you'll end up losing most of your army in the first few turns. Now moving on to two stars, we start with the Chaos Lord in Terminator armor. They're a more expensive version of the Chaos Lord, especially seeing as both of them can deep strike. For the extra price, you're getting one more wound, plus one to your save, and one inch less movement. You know, normal Terminator stuff. You do get access to Terminator weapons, but the only option that is different to normal melee weapons is the Chain Fist, which is high AP and more consistent damage, but honestly you're better off with the Thunder Hammer more often than not, which the Terminator weapons do not have access to. Especially seeing as the Chaos HQ slot is as competitive as it is, I don't see you wanting to take suboptimal choice when there's so many good options in there. Next up in two stars we have Cypher. He has a very similar set of effects to a Space Marine Captain, with an identical stat line. As an upside, you are getting a good pair of pistols, including a plasma pistol that doesn't explode on you, and you can actually advance with these pistols and still shoot. But this does put you in quite close range, and seeing as Cypher doesn't actually carry a melee weapon on him, and his melee isn't that fearsome, he's probably end up getting munched in melee if you try that, especially seeing as he's stuck with the default 4 attacks of strength 4. The Fallen don't even get a Legion trait really, and they aren't good enough on their own to add to other detachments. Their Vigilus detachment isn't great either as you can easily come up against an army that doesn't generate command points and half of the stratagems can only be used against Dark Angels. You can't really base this whole strategy around coming up specifically against Dark Angels, although if you do come up against Dark Angel players quite frequently, why not give it a try, I'm sure it could be good fun. Next up in two stars we have Harken World Claimer. You can get some decent anti-leadership stacky if you bring Harken, some Raptors and some Night Lords all together. Minus 3 leadership is quite significant and at that point is when I start actually considering leadership to be a thing. Leadership is kind of not that great right now seeing as most most unit sizes are way too small and they either tend to get wiped out completely or your opponent has ways of mitigating it if you're like the Tyranids or the Orcs. But when you're having minus three, you're bringing Necrons down to a Guardsman level, you're bringing Guardsmen down to a Grotz level, and you're bringing Space Marines down to a Grotz level as well almost. But you have to note that this is quite a large investment and the aura is only six inches and it's not like you can get more than one or two units under this effect if your opponent knows you're going to be doing this. As for Harkon himself, the rest of his stats are just kind of unimpressive. You might as well just bring a like a Chaos Lord, which can be included in any league with any Chaos God at only one point more. At least Harkin gets the Lightning Claws, whereas the Chaos Lord ends up paying the same amount to have a default Chain Sword, which isn't that great. And I can definitely see Harkin being a lot better if the Lord of Raptors all affected the Warp Talons, but to be honest, that wouldn't make a ton of sense. Next up, we have Khan the Betrayer. He's got a large number of attacks, and being able to fight twice, he should be able to rip through anything. The high AP and fixed 2-up weapon skill are really good things that should make him a strong character. He's got a large number of attacks, and he's able to fight twice, which should enable him to rip through anything. The high AP and fixed 2-up weapon skill are all good things that make him a really good character. The problems start at his price point though. 120 points is expensive, although his volume of attacks kind of make up for it. The problems continue though with his tiny aura that's only 1 inch, which can't even affect himself, so you can't get those re-rolls of one on your weapon skill. Furthermore, you can't just sit calm back as you really should be sending him into melee as he is most effective in melee and he can just tear through things there, rather than sitting him back and not really accomplishing much. But the problem is if you're sending him into melee, you better expect to kill a couple of friendly models every time because every hit roll of one, which you can't re-roll should I note, he ends up hitting a friendly model which is probably going to kill them. And to round it all off, his stat line isn't too impressive, having a pretty standard captain stat line except for his strength and number of attacks. The strength of him and his weapon only bring him up to strength 6 which isn't all that impressive. Mowing through infantry is cool and all but I think the chaos can do that pretty easily. I mean having 16 attacks on the charge is quite nice as well and should enable you to plink off wounds of things tougher than infantry, but really there's better ways of doing this in Chaos. Next up in 2 stars is the Fallen. They are normal Chaos Space Marines with normal Chaos Space Marines stat line, cost and equipment. So why do they end up in 2 stars when Chaos Space Marines clearly aren't? While well, they do have a pseudo chapter tactic that allows them to reroll ones if they don't move, it is mostly made redundant just by taking Cypher which you'll be doing if you take the Fallen. They are also not affected by most of the normal stratagems, nor can they pledge themselves to any Chaos God which lots of so much good stuff from the Codex. 
they're decent as Chaos Space Marines tend to be, but I don't see why they couldn't have an Emperor's Children or World Eaters type thing where they could be taking troops in an entirely formed detachment. Admittedly that would require other units being able to be fallen, but I'm not really sure why that couldn't be the case. You could just take normal Space Marines, is it? Next up in two stars is Corn Berserkers. In any other faction outside of World Eaters, these guys comfortably sit in two stars. The extra points to fight twice isn't really worth it when they're going to have trouble getting up the board to begin with. In World Eaters, on the other hand, they are much closer to three stars. The buff for an extra attack that stacks their fight again is really nice. They end up with so many attacks they are likely to tear through wherever they touch, especially at strength five. It means they're wounding pretty much everything on at least a five up. Giving them double melee weapons is probably the way to go to maximize your number of attacks, bringing their strength five also up to strength six with their chain axe. The only question then is, at the cost of 15 points, 16 if you include the chain axe per berserker, is it worth it? And the answer to that I think is no, especially seeing as you need something to help them get up the board. Unless you get a really nice deployment which allows for really short charges, most of your berserkers will be dead before they can even reach the front lines. They're not especially tanky because they just have a normal chaos space from your stat line outside of their melee. Next up in two stars is Chaos Spawn. These guys aren't bad to get through random effects that kill enemy characters, pretty bad if they kill yours, but bringing them in your army is somewhat questionable. They're quite tough, but they only have a 5 up save. They can have up to 8 attacks, but a minimum of 1. They also have the Beast keyword, which is interesting seeing as it's the keyword that rarely crops up. Unfortunately, this interesting keyword makes it impossible for them to get into transports, and with no other way of getting up the board, they'll probably just get picked off before they can get in. Their only hope is that your opponent completely ignores them, they waddle up the board and get into melee. Their advantage is that when they do get into melee, all their buffs support their melee. I would argue that minus 2 AP is the least useful of the buffs, so you're already getting minus 2 AP from their weapons default, and you're most likely to charge them at infantry due to the fact that their strength isn't really that high. Therefore, AP minus 2 is usually enough, unless they're probably hitting terminators or something, but they usually have an invuln save, so that doesn't really matter anyway. The plus 2 attacks I'd probably say is the most useful one, making their number of attacks more consistently good. Just try and get chaos spawns off of random effects rather than just bringing them on the table. Although I believe those cost reinforcement points now, so they're less viable inside competitive play. Next up we have the Chaos Predator. With the lack of good benefits to the shooting phase or many stratagems to benefit them specifically, they do have one for plus one wound and damage if there are three predators nearby, it is hard to make good shooting units in Chaos, especially when it can't move without suffering the penalty to hit. Of course you can bring the Iron Warrior's Warlord trait that can fix that, but that's still quite a large investment. And the Predator chassis for me, at least, is quite weak, only having toughness 7 and a 3 up save. There's no invuln save involved in this, so that means that most things will be able to tear through it. You equip them up to 4 LAS cannon shots, which should be able to take down an enemy vehicle before it's torn to shreds, but you're putting a large amount of points into the poor Predator. The only upside to this over the similar Forge Fiend is that it has a 3 up ballistic skill, which means that when it's moving it's only hitting on 4 ups, which isn't the worst. Next up we have the Chaos Vindicator, they're much like the Predator with an extra point of toughness at the cost of having a significantly shorter range weapon. So being at toughness 8 is really nice, it puts you out of the range of a lot of things and makes a lot of things increase their to wound by 1, but the problem is you're going to be able to be shot at more things due to the 24 inch demolish cannon. It's going to take you longer to get the Chaos Vindicator into range. Without the ability to easily remove the heavy modifier, there's no real reason to bring this as it can't take damage as well due to its lack of invulnerable save, and its short range forces it to move in and put it in range of almost everything, meaning your opponent doesn't need to move things as much. Once it has gotten in and fired at a penalty at your opponent, your opponent can either move out the way or just blow it up, more likely the latter than the former. Also d6 attacks is a real pain when you can roll a 1 with your demolisher cannon, and it's just kind of disappointing all in all. I also note that if you bring 3 of them the stratagem is better for the predator than the vindicator, so take that as you will. Next up in two stars you have the Defiler. They are tankier than a lot of Chaos vehicles, but where they are lacking is in their ability to hit back. They start with a weapon and ballistic skill of a 4 up. This means they aren't fantastic in melee, especially seeing as you only start with 4 attacks, even if their melee weapons are really strong. They do have a large number and variety of ranged weapons, but that doesn't really particularly matter if you can't move and fire without the penalty. Although we'll note that the 72 inch battle cannon is very nice and you can sort of make up for the fact that they can't move with a longer range weapon, but ideally you want to be in range with more of your weapons than just the battle cannon. Also the guns are a very different set of ranges which is kind of awkward to use. I don't really particularly want to bring something that has the 72 inch range and then also have a heavy flamer on it. Ideally if I were to do something like that I'd just screen it out with some infantry units so that it can't get charged. I take it purely for the melee though, uh, despite only having 4 attacks and a 4 up weapon skill, the melee itself is quite strong and can dump out a reasonable amount of damage for its points. So if you ignore like half of the kit on the defiler it turns out it's actually quite good. Well not fantastic but quite good. 
And finally in two stars we have the Venom Crawler. At least his weapons are assault this time so we don't have to complain about the heavy weapon penalty. The Venom Crawler isn't really bringing anything to the table though that can't be done in some other manner. Yes it has a decent melee weapon, but there are units with better melee weapons and a better weapon skill. Yes it has strength 8 weapons on the highest profile, but there are ways of getting higher strength weapons with a longer range. Yes it has a 5 pinball and save, but only 10 wounds as things are going to get bracketed beyond use or killed incredibly quickly. It's just kind of a tragic case where it doesn't really do anything especially well enough for you to not want to take a multitude of other units. Moving on into three stars with Abaddon the Despoiler, he's a very powerful character with scary melee options. His shooting is a little mediocre, but it's decent at slaying Primaris. He is unlike other quote unquote main characters restricted to the Black Legion only, although he does carry keywords for every Chaos God so at least you can get the benefits from the stratagems that comes with that. Abaddon himself has a good profile, having very good saves, a good toughness, and a high number of wounds. The problem with him, along with many other characters like him, apart from being in a faction with weaker traits, stratagems, and relics, is that he is a large target with a very high points cost. At least you can keep him screened or just off the map as he can deep strike, naturally, which is quite nice. Next up in three stars we have Fabius Bile. He has a decent stat line and is decent at killing things in melee, decent all around in his combat, but where his strength comes in is in his enhanced warrior's ability. I'd like to read an excerpt from the rules here because I think this is quite uh, funny. Fabius Bile can enhance one unit of Heretic Astartes but not characters. They refuse the dubious honour of Bile's gifts. Anyway, it gives you a chance to increase the strength, toughness, or attacks characteristic of a nearby infantry. This is good for things like Possessed or Corn Berserkers, or basically any unit that you want to be getting into melee. Heck, even the toughness is nice for putting on just some infantry you have nearby, as Chaos is much more likely to get into melee than something like Necrons, which have similar set of buffs. He doesn't benefit from any Legion traits, or get to use anything that worships a Chaos God, but I don't think there's anything to stop you from wanting to run Bile. I guess the only thing that's stopping you from running Bile is the crowded HQ slot, because the HQ slot is just filled with really good options. I guess also it means he isn't affected by any auras that are legion specific, and having a legion is quite important. I'll also note that Fabius Bar is getting a new model soon, and probably will end up getting new rules with it, this is probably going to be out of date almost immediately. Sorry about that. Next up is the Master of Executions. The Master of Executions is a reasonably cheap HQ option for the Chaos Space Marines. The problem is the HQ slot is incredibly competitive and you want your powerful options to be in there rather than your cheap options. Master of Executions is also surprisingly similar to the Exalted Champion. The Exalted Champion actually gives a buff around him, whereas the Master of Executions is just designed for killing characters. He does have a very nice weapon for killing characters, it doesn't have too much AP and he has a large number of attacks for a character, and he's doing D3 wounds rather than just one. Additionally, he can do a mortal wound for every wound roll of six he gets, which means that he synergizes quite nicely with the Exalted Champion as well. Though having to choose between Master of Executions and Exalted Champion, I would personally choose the Exalted Champion. The Exalted Champion has an aura effect which benefits more of your army, and has the character slaying thing as an extra bonus on top of it. Admittedly he is more expensive, but the Master of Executions can only kill characters, so he's not really giving any other benefits to your army, especially if you can't even get to the characters, as most of the time characters will be screened away at the back of an army. Next up is the Warpsmith, a decent and more importantly cheap HQ slot. The downside of course is the HQ slot is crowded with good options, so you don't really care about taking a cheap choice when you want to be putting your expensive powerful units in there. The other problem is Chaos don't really bring a ton of vehicles, and being able to heal D3 wounds isn't that significant. I pointed out a few times before that I don't think repairs are that important unless you can repair things from like its bottom bracket to its top bracket and you'd have to bring far too many warpsmiths to do that reliably. He also can't heal anything with fly, but that's pretty much standard. He also carries quite a few different guns, which is nice because he can actually shoot all of them because none of them are pistol, and the fact that they are close range isn't too much of a problem if you're parking him near your vehicles, because he can defend them from deep strike charges. That's something worth considering, although to be fair you probably want to be keeping him screened a little bit better because you don't really want your characters to be the targets of charges. If you are, he has flamers, which is nice for that. Next up we have Sorcerers and Terminator Armor. Once again, we start off with the HQ slot is very crowded with good options for Chaos Space Marines. Of course the Sorcerers and Terminator Armors are still good, you have the usual plus one wound and plus one save at the cost of a bit of mobility, but they're still ending up with the same number of casts as a normal Sorcerer, which is very nice because, you know, two casts a turn is nice. They do cost a little bit extra which is a little sad, but they're still a sorcerer at heart, which means they can dump out a fair amount of mortal wounds and powerful buffing spells. Though generally I can see you wanting to take the normal sorcerers with either the ability to deep strike with the jetpack, or just because the other sorcerers are cheaper. 
Next up in three stars, we have the Chaos Space Marines. It's a little sad to see a troops choice this low down, especially seeing as in every other list, the troops choices were either four or five stars. The main reason for putting Chaos Space Marines this low down is because cultists are just a much better choice. They're much cheaper for building battalions, which means you can be building detachments that give many command points for significantly less points. They're better damaging units out there, and generally having versatility isn't as important as having power in 40k right now. As long as your entire army covers every single option, it doesn't really matter if individual individual units are versatile. Of course, the other letdowns include only having one wound, and having a pretty average stat line means that they're pretty easy to kill. I guess they are cheaper than tax by one point, but tactical marines get combat doctrines, so whether one or the other is better is up for debate, really. Next up in three stars is The Chosen. Of course, if I'm going to rate Chaos Space Marines three stars, I pretty much have to put these guys here. The elite spot in Chaos Space Marines isn't as hotly contested as it is in other armies, but there's still strong options. The Chosen are okay at use of this slot, as for one more point, you're getting plus one leadership and plus one attack. And with the ability to take melee weapons on the entire Chosen squad, you can get a very strong melee squad, carrying weapons like Thunder Hammers, Lightning Claws, Power Axes, or whatever you want, really. The main problem is you may find it difficult to get them up into the board into melee, due to lacking deep strike. Oh, let's hear that again. Of course, you can always fit them into a Rhino or a Land Raider, but these are both extra costs on top of the Chosen, which you don't really want to be spending. Chaos also has a lot of deep strike options to make the Chosen a slightly less popular option. At the end of the day though, they could still just be treated like Chaos Space Marines that you can charge into melee and get one extra attack with, which isn't the end of the world to be honest. Next up in 3 stars is the Hellbrute. It's pretty standard Dreadnought stuff here. You can kit them out with fully ranged weapons, but most of them are heavy weapons. Unless of course you take the fists and also equip guns on the underside of them as well. And of course there's a stratagem to get them to shoot twice, but only if the target is the nearest visible unit and they haven't moved. Which admittedly can be played around to get working. The melee weapons are reasonably scary and they have a decent amount of movement to close the gap, but once again why wouldn't you just take a unit that can deep strike? One thing is worth noting is if you take the plasma cannon, you can actually damage yourself and shoot the plasma cannon three times due to the rule that allows you to make a shot if you take damage in a phase, combined with the shoot twice stratagem. Overall of course, it doesn't really stand out enough to make it worth it really. Next up in three stars we have Terminators. They have an okay option. At their base cost of 26 points, they're not too bad, to be honest. They can deep strike in, which gives them a huge edge over a lot of other melee units. And they can carry a decent set of guns with a decent weapon and ballistic skill. And their 2-up save and 5-up invuln save is quite nice. It is unfortunate that they can't get access to all the better invuln saves that the Marine Terminators get, but the Chaos Terminators are in a nice spot, to be honest. You can take them, and they're not too bad to your list. Although I would advise trying to take them as cheaply as possible, seeing as you begin to pile on more costs onto them, they tend to end up being less efficient, and becoming more of a target priority, and therefore end up being wiped off the table faster. This does primarily mean that they're going to be used for charging into melee at infantry, but tying up infantry is never a bad thing. And also, if you can get them to charge into characters and stuff, they can probably bash the characters reasonably well. Most characters have a really high invuln save, so you don't really need a ton of AP and you're more relying off a volume of attacks to eventually break through. Next up in 3 stars we have Noise Marines. They can be taken as troops choices for Emperor's Children which is quite nice, and have a decent selection of weapons including a Cover Ignoring Assault 3 quote unquote bolter. You can get Blast Masters which are decent anti-vehicle, anti-infantry weapons, which you can use as anti-infantry as you're moving up the board, and when you find a nice place to root yourself you can use anti-vehicle option. The problem is they just end up costing a bit too much. If you want the CP you take the Cultists, if you want the vehicle killing you take Havocs, if you want the infantry killing you take Possessed. There's lots of other options as well in between. I mean of course you get to shoot after you die, but with no way of bringing them back it doesn't make it too menacing. And of course they get a stratagem that likes their sonic blasters a higher strength and higher damage, which is nice for killing Primaris, but it's an expensive toll to pay every turn, especially something you're making your quote unquote troops choice. Next up in 3 stars is the Chaos Rhino. It's a Rhino. Not really too much interesting to say here. It's got a transport capacity of 10, you can stuff your infantry in it, it's good for getting your melee options up the board, but when you have so many deep strike options as Chaos does have, there's not really too much reason you want to bring a uh, Rhino over, say, Warp Talents. Still though, if you're building a fluffy army or you want to bring Corn Berserkers, definitely bring a Rhino. Next up in 3 stars is the Bikers. The Bikers are an okay option. They're fast, they can get into melee. I guess if you want to limit the amount of deep strike you're taking, Chaos Bikers are good. I'd rate them about on par with the Orc War Bikers to be honest, with the ability to dacker a little bit and also have good enough melee as well. They yeah, a decent selection of Wargear options as well which is quite nice, but nothing overall too impressive to push them beyond 3 stars. And finally in 3 stars we have Raptors. They're like Warp Talons. 
but worse. Okay, there's a bit more to it than that. So there's not strictly worse than the Warp Talons. They end up having a very similar amount of tax, and the Warp Talons are restricted to only using their Lightning Claws, which can end up being quite expensive. Though, of course, the upsides of the Warp Talons include the fact they have a 5 up Pinvon save where the Raptors do not, and of course the fact the Lightning Claws are significantly better than just using Chain Swords. You do need some AP to be able to break through those high saves of things like Marines. The fact that the Raptors aren't particularly versatile with their equipment is a bit tragic to be honest, because if they could take things like power swords or something like that, I could easily see them being rated significantly higher. Although their low number of attacks by default is a bit miserable. Moving on to four stars, we start with the Chaos Lord. Chaos Lords are only really seen in competitive with their jump packs to bring alongside Warp Towns and other deep striking units. This means not only do you have a high power unit tied in with the rest of your lower power anti-infantry units, but also you're giving all of them rerolls of one. The Chaos Lord himself isn't too expensive, but when you count in the extra equipment he ends up being reasonably pricey. Other things to note about him are that you can bring him in the Host Raptorial Detachment in order to get the tip of the claw, which allows him for nice consistent charges. Of course if you want to do high damage I suggest bringing them with the Thunder Hammer, because the Thunder Hammer basically turns him into a weaker Smash Captain. He doesn't have the nice Invuln save that uh, Smash Captain has, but he still has a 4 up Invuln save, and is getting the nice strength 8 attacks out. Next up from 4 stars is the Exalted Champion. They have an okay profile, although at 70 points it's pretty expensive, but the big key thing is that they're giving rerolls to wounds in the fight phase in and all around them. The only downside is they can't really get a deep strike in, so they can't get up the board as quickly. Obviously because they're a character you can keep them screened out so they can slowly plod their way up the board in order to give buffs to those things that are deep striking. He also has rerolls to hit against characters, so he ends up being a champion and also a lieutenant at the same time, but a lieutenant only for melee, which is a bit weird. He does need a bit of strength, so you need to give him some sort of war gear in order to beef that up, like give him a power maul or something like that, but be careful not to give him too much, because he is still quite a squishy chassis, as he doesn't have any invuln save. Next up we have Dark Disciples. Dark Disciples are ridiculously cheap and don't take up any detachment slots, so the reason you're bringing them is to get the plus one to your prayer rolls. Basically, if you have ten points to spare at the end of your list making and you're taking Dark Apostles, which by the way, you probably want to be taking Dark Apostles, you pretty much just throw them in if you've got the spare points. It doesn't hurt your army to have them. They don't really have any combat ability, which is kind of annoying, but at the same time, you're just going to sit them next to your Dark Apostle and give that plus one to the prayer roll, which is all you really want them for. Next up in 4 star is the Helldrake. The Helldrake are a really solid option. They started being dropped from competitive lists recently. Because of all the new demon stuff, they're not quite as good as they used to be, or at least comparatively they're not quite as good as. I genuinely think they're still really good. They have good melee, or they're a bit lacking in AP. It's good at taking out flyers because they get to add one to their hit rolls when they attack flyers. And they have a good flamer weapon that is 18 inches and is pretty much better across the board. It doesn't get any extra attacks, but that's okay. They're reasonably tough, although only toughness 7 is a bit of a downside, you always want to get up to the toughness 8 threshold because you're making things significantly better when you get that point. And at 184 points, they're not that bad, especially compared to the other things that are around a similar price point. They don't have any of the plane effects, which means they don't get the minus one to hit nor the minimum movement, and they can also be charged by ground units, which is pretty bad. It's not the end of the world, but it is a little interesting that the model looks like a fly unit, which is a little unrepresentative, and it's in the flyer slot, which is extremely weird, because most things that are in the flyer slot tend to be planes. <laughs> Next up, we have Havocs. They're a really solid heavy weapons team with the ability to move and fire without any penalties, which is so nice. It means you can keep your LAS cannons mobile, which means that you can peek in on targets and destroy them without having to be sitting out like a lemon beforehand. Obviously, if you put them in Slash, you can use Endless Cacophony and get them to shoot twice, which is really nice, because there's one thing that's better than LAS cannon, and that's shooting LAS cannons twice. Additionally, they have an extra point over toughness, so it means when they're being shot at, they can actually absorb slightly more damage. The 4 to 5 threshold of toughness isn't quite as important as the 3 to 4 one, but it's still very nice. In the end, you're basically paying 3 points to fire without penalties and have full access to the heavy weapons, as well as that extra point of toughness, which is really good. Although there are also other things competing for the ability to destroy vehicles in the Chaos Space Marine Army. Of course, the thing that's competing most with Havoc to be able to take out vehicles is the Obliterators, primarily. Both of them are ranged anti-vehicle teams, although the Obliterators are significantly shorter ranged. The key things about Obliterators are, of course, is that 1. They can deep strike, 2. They have the Demonic save, and 3. They have a 2-up regular save. And also, their guns tend to be quite strong. The D3 rolls are a little annoying, because they're quite random, and if you roll low on any of them, it's kind of annoying. The one one I probably wouldn't mind rolling low on the most is damage, because you need a high strength and high 
high AP to be able to pierce through and even do damage to the vehicle. So it doesn't really matter what your damage roll is before them. It is quite annoying to have to re-roll those. And then again, you have the rampant technovirus strategy that allows you to re-roll the flesh metal gun's random effects. Admittedly, that does mean you have to stick them in iron warriors, but iron warriors aren't terrible. You also have the mutated invigoration uh, psychic power, which allows you to re-roll one of them, which is quite nice as well, which all in all makes the obliterators quite a strong, albeit somewhat random unit. I will also have to note they are very expensive at 95 points a pop. Now, only having four wounds is a little scary, and they're also quite slow as well, only having movement of four. Though hopefully the deep strike will make up for that. Also worth noting is the flesh metal guns are actually assault, so even if you do start getting outrun, you can still advance and fire the weapons. Next up in four stars is Corn Lord of Skulls. You don't often see super heavies ending up in competitive lists, but the Corn Lord of Skulls turns out to be just affordable in order to fit them in. They're very high power and very dangerous in melee, but they're cheap enough that you can afford to put them in a super heavy detachment and still have some army left to build. What makes them even better is, of course, is that the high amount of HQ choices means you want to be taking Supreme Command detachments as Chaos. And when you have a Supreme Command detachment, you can throw in a super heavy, which means you can include the Corn Lord of Skulls. They have a decent selection of war gear that generally weigh price up against damage, and generally you want to go for the cheaper one because the big thing you want to have is the Great Corn Cleaver, which you are using to kill things in melee. The problem is it ends up being a little bit of a build around and it kind of restricts your list a little bit, especially if you're going for the super heavy detachment because you're bringing nearly a thousand points worth of corn, Lords of Skulls. Now we move on to five stars. This is the good stuff here. Let's start firstly with the Lord Discordant. He's very expensive, but also very tanky and very high power. He does have more than 10 wounds, which means that he can be targeted unlike most characters. So that is something to consider when you're taking them. A lot of lists are bringing three of them. And the key things are the one to hit rolls for the demon engines and their massive amount of attacks. Their melee is extremely scary. And especially seeing as when they get into melee, they make it harder for enemy vehicles to be able to hit. Of course, if they kill any vehicles in the fight phase, they can then repair or damage other nearby vehicles, so they end up snowballing really nastily. Toughness 6, 2 up save, 5 up pinball save. This Lord Discordant is generally very, very scary. Next up in 5 stars is the Master of Possession. Much like the Sorcerer, he has two psychic powers a turn, and access to powers that the Sorcerers don't get, which primarily benefit the Demon side of the Chaos Space Marines selection. All the powers are pretty nice, so you want to be casting as many of them as you can. The key strong ones in the Malefic Discipline are the Mutated Invigoration in order to buff your Chaos Spawn, your Possessed, and your Obliterators, or Cursed Earth, which improves the Invuln save by one, which is very nice, and Infernal Power that allows you to reroll hit and wound rolls of one for demon units, which is very nice. Admittedly, they are Legion demon units, which means they have to be Chaos Space Marines, but at the same time, it's still pretty strong buff. The Dark Apostle is 5 stars. He gets to trigger his prayers at the start of each battle round, which means regardless of whether or not you're going first, you can cast any of his quote-unquote spells. They're like Psycho Powers, but they cannot be denied, and they go off on a 3-up, regardless of what spell you're casting. Pretty much all of the abilities are good, because they can either give you defensive bonuses, like a 5-up invuln save or minus 1 to hit, or they can give you plus 1 to hit while in your shooting phase, and plus 1 to wound in your fight phase. You always know at least two powers, one of which is Dark Zealotry, and one is from the Prayers of the Dark Gods, which includes the ones I described previously. You can't use the same prayer multiple times, and the prayers don't last forever, but their effects are pretty strong, and honestly, they're worth taking multiple Dark Apostles for, just so you can get all these bonuses. Plus, you can stack multiple bonuses on one unit you particularly want to keep alive or want to particularly kill things with. The range of them is a little limited, usually only about 6 inches, but you want your Dark Apostle to be moving up with the blob of units anyway. The Dark Apostle's melee as well is not too bad, having damage 2, minus 1, and strength 5, meaning that you can use the prayers that give him a bunch of buffs for fighting, and he won't end up doing that bad of a job when he gets into melee. Next up in 5 stars, we have the Sorcerer. The Sorcerer can cast two good powers a turn. The one key thing that Chaos Space Marines have is really good Psycho powers. The Sorcerer can additionally take jump packs for extra mobility and have a decent variety of weapon options, although genuinely you want to keep him quite lean on the weapon options, seeing as you're primarily using the Sorcerer for his Psycho powers. He's also snapped quite easily, he's got a low number of wounds and no invuln save. As for the spells, Death Hex is quite nice, being able to remove enemy invuln saves. Prescience is also very nice, being able to add one to all hit rolls, which is very scary. You want to use this on pretty much any unit. It's effective in both the fight and the shooting phase, so there's no reason why you wouldn't want to be casting Prescience. Warp Time is also a pretty popular one, giving the ability to move again, which is very nice if you need to get something in range. There's also, of course, Diabolic Strength, which isn't that bad either. Gives a plus two strength and plus one attacks to a model. Isn't that useful if you need it to buff a whole squad, but you can still dump it on 
on like a champion or something like that in order to give them a few extra hits and wounds in the fight phase. Weaver of Fates is also nice, allowing you to buff the Involn save by one, and Miasma Pestilence is nice for annoying your opponent by giving them minus one to hit. All in all, they're a good set of powers, the Dark Hereticus Discipline, and it's why people are taking lots of sorcerers in competitive lists. Now in 5 stars we have Cultists. They are an insanely cheap troops option, although they end up being a bit worse than Guardsmen for the same amount of points. You can take them in larger squads and bring them back with Tide of Traitors, which is an upside of them over Guardsmen, because Guardsmen you can only bring back with a Valhalla Stratagem and their squad sizes are limited to 10, so it's generally not worth doing. But as for Cultists, they have pretty much the same stat line and can be taken in larger squads. Of course they have a worse leadership, which kinda sucks, but at the end of the day you don't really care about the leadership, they're primarily there for you to generate command points, which is why they're in 5 stars. The combat abilities are pretty meagre, once again, it doesn't really matter, they're only there for the command points. Next up in 5 stars we have The Possessed. They have good strength, decent mobility, are reasonably cost effective, tanky, with a decent number of attacks, and synergizes with basically all the melee buffs that Chaos get, and Chaos get a lot of melee buffs. Typically when I see a melee only unit and don't see that they have deep strike, I tend to go ugh. What's the point in taking this? Although the Possessed do have a nasty 7 inch movement and a 5 up invuln save that can allow them to soak up a bit of damage. The one thing that I'd say kinda sucks is they have to roll a d3 every time they're trying to fight, which means that you can get really shafted in the number of attacks. But with their reasonable amount of AP and them being as tough as they are, they can end up soaking up quite a bit of damage before they die. Seeing as basically every single competitive list was taking some amount of Possessed, I would strongly recommend taking some of your own and giving them a try on the board. Finally, we have the Greater Possessed. They are like a Possessed, but with extra wounds, toughness, and a slightly better weapon skill. They still move just as fast, but they end up hitting a lot harder. They have D3 damage instead of only 1, and they add 1 to the strength of all nearby Mark of Chaos Legion Demons, which primarily is going to be your Possessed. Adding 1 to the strength of your Possessed puts them from a nasty 5 to an even nastier 6, making them wound all toughness 3 things on 2s. Very scary stuff. All in all, they make good synergy with your Possessed, and seeing as you want to be taking Possessed anyway, you might as well take some greater possess in order to buff them up as well. Alright, uh, that's everything that is Chaos Space Marine in the Chaos Space Marine Codex. I hope you enjoyed listening to me rambling on about Chaos Space Marines. I should probably start making a set schedule and telling you guys what I'm going to be working on next. I have a strong feeling that the next video is going to be on Death Guard, seeing as I have access to the Codex easily and can speak to somebody that has played Death Guard here and there. Also, I've had quite a few people comment that they want to see Death Guard, and honestly, I'd like to give Death Guard a good examination. Uh, I hope you like and subscribe and comment down below your thoughts on the video and anything I got wrong. What have I rated to two stars that should be five stars, what have I accidentally overlooked, and so on and so forth. And finally I'd like to thank you for watching.